I've spent many, many years trying to figure out like how I like to eat, and I realized I like to eat the best food in the world every single day, but I don't like to spend more than five or 10 minutes cooking. So this is basically how you do that. So over the years, I've been cooking so many different things, and I started out making dishes. Like, okay, I really want to make this dish, you know, and then that dish. But what happens is people oftentimes feel like they buy the ingredients for the one dish, they make it, and then they're stuck with it, and they don't know what to do, and they feel like they're wasting stuff. So I've devised a technique that involves 10 different food-related items, and if you have these items, you're gonna be able to make almost an infinite amount of combinations throughout the week. And the best part is they're super simple, they're interchangeable. You can make everything from scratch or you could literally go out and buy everything. When you understand this concept, you're gonna be making the best food of your entire life and every meal is gonna take you about five minutes. Just takes a little bit of prep, a little bit of understanding, but follow the journey with me and I will show you guys what is up. Just a quick note, follow me on Instagram if you want to kind of see, not just behind the scenes stuff, but I'm doing a lot of cooking there, like kind of what's going on in my daily life. It's just jolts of inspiration. So if you're feeling like, yeah, the YouTube videos are great to like sit down and watch, but you just want those moments where it's like, oh wow, that's he's like dancing and having fun or playing guitar or cooking something great, like I wanna go do that too. The channel is all about inspiring you to get up off your feet and do something in life and feel fantastic. The thing about the Incredible Edible 10 is it's all about balance. So if you know anything about cooking and balance, you know that like getting certain flavors and textures to work together is important. But what's cool about this is any cuisine that you like will work. When you understand the 10 different things that you need, you can make an infinite amount of dishes. So what I say is figure out what your favorite kind of food is and then start checking the list off. I'm gonna put the list of the 10 different things below that you need and then you can fill in. It's like, okay, number one is freshness. Okay, what are those things that I like? Number two is spicy. What kind of spice do I like? And when you get those, make them hodgepodge of deliciousness. So what I usually do, I kind of pick a day where I'll go shopping, maybe on a Sunday, and then I'll prep food for a couple hours. It's really up to you whether you want to do no prep or not. You kind of decide what feels right. I love to prep, but I make sure everything that I make is super easy. Most of it is just cutting things fresh, maybe sauteing them in a pan, mixing some stuff around. This is stuff that anybody can literally make. So the first thing is you gotta have some freshness, of course. So for me, you know, it might be lettuce. I might shred up some carrots, slice some cucumbers, have some broccoli, whatever vegetables you like, just having the freshness is very, important and if you want of course you could steam the broccoli and stuff but i like to keep everything fresh and i'll show you what to do with it after that and number two is a protein so whether that's someone like me likes to eat meat i usually get like chicken either like i grill up some chicken or i just cook some ground chicken in this case i cooked up ground chicken and then i took half of the uncooked chicken and made little meatballs with some like carrots and scallions and crispy onions and just just a little bit of flavor just to have a couple variations but if you're vegetarian, you can have tofu, you could do beans. Um, I also like eggs, so I usually have eggs around, but whatever works for you. Number three is spice. Now spice, some people like things spicier than other people, of course, but I prefer to kind of have a balance. I just like spice, it adds flavor. I don't like to blow up my freaking mind, but some people do. So depending on what kind of spice you like, you can have anything as simple as some hot sauce, or sriracha. I like to have these little chilies, they're like sort of Thai chilies. I also have chili powder. Um, I usually have different options around, but spice is so important. So number four is what I call the main batch. And the main batch is something that's like gonna be big and filling and hearty and delicious. Especially in the winter, I could do curries and chilies. Um, today I did like a green curry and I basically made this delicious big thing of curry. You can make your own curry, but in my case, I took some curry paste. I used like a yellow curry paste and I cooked that down with some coconut milk. And at this point, you can add in whatever you want. It's winter, so I like to do sweet potatoes. I also add some broccoli stems. Um, and then if you want, you can add like kaffir lime and lemongrass, but that's completely optional. And just let that cook and simmer until it becomes a nice soupy situation. And then you have this big batch of something. Like I said, you could do a chili that you can add to things. And just, it's very hearty, very comforting. Number five, super essential, is something crispy because you want texture, especially if you're gonna have like a big curry. You don't just want everything mushy. You wanna have a little crispiness. So what I like to do is either just take some peanuts, you can roast peanuts or buy them roasted, and just chop them up or have them whole. That's cool. Whatever your bag, it's cool, I'm not judging you. And what I like to personally do is take shallots and slice them super thin and just fry them up and you end up with this just freaking delicious 
crispy shallots. You can also buy them in the store, so Asian markets have crispy shallots or you can get just any crispy onion. Whatever kind of crispy you want. Sometimes people use popcorn. That's amazing too. It's just important to have the texture. There goes the dog. Everybody meet Freya. Say hi, Freya. Four month old, our new pup. Freya, say hi. Look, you don't be camera shy. Number six is some kind of starch. So in the case of what I'm making today, I'm doing rice. And I also have rice noodles. I'm showing you variations. Usually I might just do one, so you can keep it at one or do a million if you want. I don't, again, I don't care. So I, may, I cook some jasmine rice and just kind of leave that. And this allows me to just have rice on the side with stuff. I can make fried rices um, and it's just whatever feels good. Also with the noodles, these are great. They're kind of like pad thai or pho noodles. So you could be making soups. Um, you could just be putting this with the curry. It's great to eat it with the curry. Um, you could stir fry up, like I said, to make some kind of pad thai or stir fried noodle dish. Um, you could use brown rice. If you're into Italian food, you can use pasta. Again, everything is interchangeable. So think about your food. If you're into Mexican food, it might be corn tortillas, right? And so you start to see, it's like, okay, I have my chicken and then I have my corn tortillas. What is my crunch? Number seven is umami. And the thing about umami, if you don't know what it is, it's basically the savory flavor. A lot of times people use MSG and stuff, but you don't need that. There's different ways to get umami. Soy sauce, miso paste, super umami. What I like to do is make this kind of like all purpose soy sauce. I have soy sauce in here. There's some chili, there's some scallion. Um, I had actually some tamarind in there. There's a little bit of sugar and vinegar. And then I have this big batch of sauce. Whenever I fry up some rice, sprinkle some of that on, next thing you know, you got something delicious. One of my favorite personal things is just taking some cherry tomatoes and just cutting them in half, a little bit of oil, roast them in the oven till they're kind of like charred and delicious. And they have just a super amount of umami. Mushrooms add great umami. Whatever you wanna do, you wanna get that extra flavor. So make your umami sauce and you'll be set to go. Number eight is herbs. Not everyone likes every herb, I personally do, but in the case of today, I'm using scallions that I basically just chopped up fine, and you don't have to, but it, to me it saves time. Chop them up, just put them with a little paper towel in like some kind of container, or even as a black bag. And I see the same thing with cilantro. I keep some of the cilantro more whole so I can rip that up, but you get a bunch of cilantro, you're just sprinkling it on, it makes dishes so easy. And the thing about the freshness with the herb is that it adds brightness to everything. So when you're cooking a curry, you sprinkle in some of the herbs and you just like, you don't wanna cook necessarily with cilantro in the curry, but at the end you sprinkle it in and you get like all that flavor, which is awesome. Scallions you can cook with, and of course you can cook with any herb, but understanding which ones are delicate ones, like these guys right here, is gonna really help you to know when to add it. The thing about citrus is citrus and vinegar sort of act in a similar manner. So you don't need to have both. It depends on the cuisine. Some cuisines are gonna be much more like, in Chinese food example, they're using a lot of rice wine or Japanese food, whereas in Thai food, it's gonna be a lot more lime. So kind of decide which one you wanna have. I usually have both around, but I always have my limes and you can kind of have them pre-cut if you want and you squeeze that into stuff. But citrus is gonna add the brightness to stuff. Like herbs add like a freshness and citrus adds a brightness, right? So when you have a curry, it's spicy. It feels like it's missing something. Whenever you make a curry batch, you're gonna be like, it's good, but it's missing something. Try to factor in the fact that you're gonna squeeze lime into it. And you're gonna add fresh herbs at the end and it's gonna start to change that up. So when you're tasting it, just make sure you're aware. It's all about awareness. Number 10 is something pickled. And in my case, I have something that's pickled. I also have something that's pickled and spicy. So you can kind of get away with one less thing if you have that, but I always like to make this mixture. It's basically um, carrots and daikon that are pickled in a super simple solution. It's basically, you take some vinegar, you take some sugar and some salt, you cook that down, then you add water to taste because you want to add about like half and half, you know, half vinegar, half water, but you add the water once it's already cooked and you kind of think about what the flavor is going to be like. This just goes great and everything. It gives you a nice pop and a zip plus a crunch. And then this stuff is just miracle juice right here. It's just white vinegar, a lot of Thai. It's like a huge condiment in Thai community. White vinegar, some chilies that I cut up. I also left some whole just for fun and that's it. I added some lemongrass into mine just as an extra bonus. You don't need it. Every day that it sits, it gets better and better and better and better. And that's just a great thing. You can throw it in curries. You can add it to fried rices. You can just like, if you wanna have some spice and some vinegariness and stuff, it's gonna help you in such a big way. So the reason I wanted to share with you my incredible Edible 10 is because if you understand these different elements of food, when you go to the market, you make your shopping list, make sure you have ideally one of each category checked off. But again, if you only have four or five, that's completely okay. 
But if you have these categories checked off when you go to buy your food, say you're, okay, I'm doing Mexican food, I gotta have my protein, I gotta have my fresh herb, I gotta have some fresh vegetables, I gotta have my starch, I gotta have my spice, my umami, whatever it is, then throughout the week you're gonna be able to make super amazing, incredible food at ease. So now I'm gonna show you guys some of the things that I made with this. And everything that I cooked, I'd say about max five minutes, some things take three minutes. And you have the option, you can either prep everything and cook it all before and freeze some stuff or whatever, but what I like to do, is put things in all these different containers, and then whatever I want, I take it out, turn the heat on, and just start throwing stuff in and make something delicious. To start things off simply, we already made that huge batch of curry. So what I basically do is I take some rice noodles that are heated up, and remember, some of the rice noodles I had partially cooked, and the other ones are just soaked. So for the partially cooked ones, for example, that's what you're gonna be using with like curries and stuff. When you want to make a stir fry, you want to just use the soaked rice noodles. Otherwise, they will start to break because of the heat. They're going to get all screwed up. Do not do it. So with the curry, all you do is you put your noodles down, top it with the curry. And at this point, you can add whatever you want on top. Lime, cilantro, some crispy shallots. You can add in some of that nice little pickled vinegar right here. This stuff is so good. Because what you're doing is you're getting the chewiness of the noodle getting the crispiness of the shallots and also the flavor of the shallots. The lime juice kind of brightens everything up and the curry of course is just like hearty and then you have the fresh herb. I'm keeping that super simple because like sometimes you want to eat something that takes 10 seconds. All you do is heat your curry up real quick, add some toppings, boom, you're done, you're in heaven. A personal favorite, everyone loves pad thai and I'm not pretending this is authentic pad thai because I'm not using all the right ingredients but I'm getting the same vibe and that to me is all that matters. So what I do is I take my wok, get that thing super freaking hot. And the first step is I actually want to steam the broccoli. So I have this broccoli here and I could have steamed it before, but I find a cool trick is just throwing a little bit of broccoli in some water, just a little bit. As the water steams out and disappears, the broccoli will be nice and steamed. At that point, I can throw in some carrots. You can kind of add whatever veggies you want. Throw in some cherry tomatoes, some scallions. And as the water starts to come out, push everything aside and then I crack in an egg. Um, and the whole idea is a little bit of oil, crack in your egg, let it set for just like 30 seconds and then start to scramble it. If you scramble it too quickly and mix it in with everything, you'll lose the egg and you want the egg texture or what the hell's the point of the egg? At this point, you can add your protein. A lot of times you'll see like a mixture of shrimp and chicken and tofu. Um, I just did some tofu in there, kind of mix that around. Then you toss in your noodles that again are just soaked and not cooked. And then you add in your sauce. And what's gonna happen is as the sauce and some of the water from the vegetables cooks into the noodles, the noodles are gonna cook and they're gonna be perfectly freaking cooked. But you can give it a try if you wanna add more sauce, that's cool. You can always add sauce later, no one's judging you. At this point, just put it on a plate. You can sprinkle over some chili, you can add some fresh herbs if you want, some chili vinegar, whatever feels good, but you got a quick dish that took you another freaking five minutes to make something so good. And normally, you'd probably go out for you know takeout and you end up spending 10, 15, 20 dollars even, when you could buy all this food for not very much money. Freaking key to any good noodle dish. That's why I did not boil these types of noodles first. Because they're chewy, they get that al dente experience, and they don't break apart. 